Hey guys, Sherry Ann Richardson from experimentalhomesteader.com and today we're on task 13 of the 50 survival prepper tasks for beginners. Again, I hesitate to say the word beginners because these really apply to everybody. Um, if you haven't done these, you definitely need to think about getting them done. Um, task 13 is to prepare for cold weather to keep your family warm. Um, cold weather events can be treacherous even if you're inside your home. If you lose power and it's freezing outside, it will soon drop to the same temperature indoors. Now, if you have a really insulated house, you might end up being a little warmer than outdoors, but it's still gonna be really, really cold. Um, you want to have things like a tent, warm blankets, sleeping bags, and other ways to keep you and your family warm if this happens, safe ways to keep you and your family warm. Um, make sure you have a safe way to warm up food inside, even if it means using MREs, which are meals ready to eat, um, with heating elements inside of them. And you'll be amazed at how comforting warm food can be in a cold weather event. So what you don't want to do is bring something like a charcoal grill or a gas grill inside and use that to heat with. That's a really bad idea. Um, you can stay warm by layering your clothes. You might not be the most comfortable, but layers of clothes definitely do help to keep your body heat in. Um, thermal underwear, if you don't have any, get it even if you don't think you're going to use it because you just, you never know. And it's better to have some on hand and never need it than to not have it and actually need it. Um, mittens, socks, a jacket or a coat, whatever it takes, however many layers you can put on to help keep your body heat up against you. Um, if you keep your hands and feet warm, that's going to really, really help. Um, this is because when your extremities get cold, you have reduced blood circulation. So that makes your entire body feel cold. And if you keep those warm, it's going to help to keep the rest of your body warm. You also want to stay up off of the floor because the floor can get very cold, especially if you have a basement underneath like we do. Um, so wear shoes, winter boots, rubble, rubber sold slippers, things that don't really conduct the heat. I mean, I'm sorry, don't conduct the cold. <laughs> um, I'm hoping that Charlie doesn't start barking right in the middle of this. Um, he has been a little bit annoyed all day. So um, you can stay warm by camping out in smaller rooms. So for example, if you have a room that you that is small that you can push the furniture off against the walls with and you can set up a tent in that room, that's going to really help you stay warm. Of course, you don't want to sleep on the floor, so you need some kind of mattress, sleeping blanket, blankets, anything you can to create a barrier between you and the floor, even couch cushions. Um, that works. If it's near a bathroom, that's even better because you won't have to go quite so far to get into the bathroom. So as a matter of fact, if you have a portable toilet because you have a camper or other reason to have one you could even put it into that room you're keeping warm and hang a blanket or a shower curtain around it to give a little bit of privacy i know that's not ideal but if it's freezing and you have no power you have to do what you have to do to be able to stay warm put blankets over the windows hang blankets over the door that's going to allow some airflow, but it's also going to give some blockage of the colder air coming in. Um, tents are great. If you don't have a tent, think about how you made those tent forts when you were little with some chairs and you just threw some blankets over them. And that gave kind of an enclosed little area that you could get in. And remember, if you have dogs or cats you want them in there with you because their body heat is going to help to keep you warm as well remember they have fur coats so um basically what you're doing is creating a micro environment to keep you warm and keep you safe and your family warm and safe 
until either the power comes back on or help arrives. You can also wear a mask inside of your home. Um, masks are not just for COVID-19. If you have a whole face mask, that's better. But if you don't, and you have some COVID mask lifts, go ahead and use those up. That's going to help to keep your face covered and warm a little bit. Um, you can also use a cloth mask or really a towel, a t-shirt, a handkerchief, whatever you have that can kind of keep the cold off of your face and keep it a little bit warm. You can also use a hot water bottle if you have a way to get hot water. You may not. But at least when the power first goes off, you should still have a little bit of hot water if you can get it to come out. Um, I know without electricity, that can be a problem. But possibly if you know a way, go ahead and use that. Um, you could also make a DIY portable stove. And I have instructions for that over on experimentalhomesteader.com if you're interested. You want to use most of these outside because you don't want the fumes inside of your house. You don't want to put them in an attached garage, even though I realize there's warmth there, but still those fumes could get in that garage and seep into the house, and that's a bad thing. So even though you don't want to go outside to cook, and you really don't want to open your doors to let a lot of cold air in if that's what you need to do, then go ahead and do it. Think about what you can cook and eat versus what you could maybe eat cold that you may have. Um, if it's cold, you're not going to have to worry so much about wrapping your refrigerator possibly or your freezers. But if you do, just take a whole bunch of blankets and layer and then try to find yarn, twine, whatever you have to kind of tie the blankets tight and try not to open your refrigerator and freezer any more than you have to. Um, so maybe make a trip and get out what you need and use the room temperature to keep things warm, cold and do that once today until your power comes back on. If it's cold enough in your house, you know, if it's 40 degrees or lower in your house, your food's gonna be fine sitting out. Um, you also may want to consider putting a wood stove in your house, even if you don't use it other than for an emergency, it's a great thing to have, not only for the heat that it produces, but you can cook on a wood stove. Now I'm going to say practice cooking on your wood stove before you actually have to, because while it may seem really simple, you have to learn how to control the temperature on that wood stove and how to actually get your food to turn out the way you want it to. We have a wood stove. I have cooked on it many times. And I also have a little magnetic thermostat that is made for a wood stove that I can put down so that I can gauge what the temperature of the top of the stove actually is. And I have learned I don't want to fill it full of firewood when I'm trying to cook on it. I want to get it to the temperature that I need it at, usually 350 degrees. And then I want to maintain with smaller pieces of wood. So this is where your small sticks and things come in really, really handy. Because when you put the bigger pieces of wood in, it's going to cause it to heat up faster. And it's going to throw that off. So that's, that's why I always say have some smaller firewood and stuff because if you do want to cook with it that's the way to go um you can also use candles and flower pots and those kind of things if you have a pet you want to be careful or small children because they could knock that over and start a fire but in a very small area such as inside of a tent that can work to add some heat you don't want to fall asleep with that happening you want to be very mindful and very careful of what you're doing and how you're doing it. Because the last thing you need is to lose your power and deal with that and then deal with the loss of your home. You need carbon monoxide uh, detectors. 
and a portable generator if you can get it. Now, I know that they have solar powered ones now, they have gas powered ones. Um, you wanna think about where you live. Are you gonna have sunlight to power it if it's solar powered during the time that you might need it? Or is it gonna be clouded up and have an issue? Are you gonna be able to get fuel for it if you buy one that operates on fuel? You need to really think about these things. And if it's a large one, you may have to have an electrician wire it into your fuse box. I know our electric company here requires that. We can't just have anyone wired in. It has to be an electrician. And so think about these things and think about what your best options are. Um, of course, there are other ways to stay warm in winter. Um, Staying hydrated is going to help you stay warm. It, we have a little solar container that will heat up water or soup or whatever. And as long as there's enough sunlight, we could put that outside and get some hot water from it. And then we could use that to make hot chocolate, coffee, you know, whatever it was that we wanted. Some soup from the powdered soup mixes. Um, we could use it in some of our freeze-dried food to rehydrate it. So there are options there if you want to have a way to have hot water and, but not necessarily something you'd use all the time. Um, eating will also help raise your body temperature. So not only do you need to stay hydrated, but you need to make sure that you are eating something, even if it's granola bars. Um, I highly suggest in your food supply that you put things that can be eaten without being cooked. Um, exercise is another way to stay warm. And while the kids, if you have kids, may not feel as cold as you because maybe they want to run around, you know, play, exercise, um, you need to know that if you're also up moving around and exercising and doing things, even though it may be confined into one small room, that is going to help you to stay a little bit warmer than if you're just sitting in one spot. Um, there are many items from portable stoves, portable generators, hot water bottles, tents, mess tins, all kinds of items that you can purchase. And at in the description of this video, I'm going to leave a link to a couple of articles over on my blog that can give you some ideas of what you can do to stay warm in winter if there is a power outage. Now, the opposite of this is staying cool in summer, but I think most of us have a better idea of how to do that than how to stay warm in winter if there's a power outage, especially if we live in a frigid climate. So I really hope this has given you something to think about and given you some ideas of what to put in, set aside in your home in case you do have a power outage. Um, don't count on just living in a warm climate as a reason to not do this because again, we know what has happened in Texas and we know that some people died because they didn't know how to properly stay warm. So they did what they thought would work and it was actually very dangerous. So this is why planning and preparing and always being ready for whatever disaster might come your way is so, so important. And like I said, I hope this helps you guys feel free to reach out if you have questions, comments, if you know of something that has worked for you that I have not mentioned, please share with everybody because, you know, every piece of information that someone can share that they have is potentially going to help someone else to make the right decisions for them and be a little bit more prepared. And it takes a village, guys. It really, really does. So, thanks for watching. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments below. 
and we will see you tomorrow with another daily vlog. Have a great night, guys.